Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creel, and I am here with Retro Nerd Girl, and Hi, we are doing yet another deep dive into another episode of The Mandalorian. And mind my manners, I like interrupted you. Why? We're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no! I <laughs> snuck it in there. Like, hello, guys. <laughs> oh, yes, folks. Appreciate the appreciate the wave that Retro Nerd Girl is giving all of you watching this video. So yes, this is the fourth episode, The Foundling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so last episode, uh, of course, ended with Bo-Katan now being a part, an official part of this cohort of Mandalorians, the mm -hmm. ones that are, let's see, what would you call them? Fundamentalist uh, Mandalorian. <laughs> Yeah, the children. Away. Yeah, the children of the watch. They are um, uh, the uh, zealots, if you will. <laughs> yes, they are <laughs> religious um, zealots. Yes, they're they're zealots. They're um, don't get mad. I use the word zealots, people, but that's pretty much what um, what they are. I would that's say I am, yeah. that if, say, for example, you like, there's certain like we'll say religious dominate denominations, some that are much more liberal, some that are middle of the road and some that are extremely conservative. So that would be, of course, this cohort here of the Mandalorians. So we see them, they're all out, you know, playing Mandalorian <laughs> games, AKA uh, close, uh, close combat. What did you think of these, these scenes? Opening I, to the I enjoyed like. them. Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me. Um, I, I don't know. It, 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 I like them. I like them a lot. They they were really good. It good um, development for this particular tribe. And um, I, I don't think that these guys are the elite. I think they they do have um, some skill. And they are they're following the Mandalorian ways, but they are not the elite of the a Mandalorian. Whereas Bo Katan actually was served with the um, with the Death Watch, and they were they were badass. You know, um, they were extremely uh, good at killing, and they were machines. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys took out Jedi easily. And well, not when they totally easily, but they took them out um, when needed. And um, these guys here are really in terrible shape. They don't know how to do anything on their own. They can't even, <laughs> I mean, they're just being picked off by this, you know, the creatures on this planet. And um, I think um, this is showing that they are trying, they, they are, participating in the Mandalorian way of being warriors, but they're not that good. Especially like you were saying with respect to uh, respect to the environment, because this is where they've, you know, chosen to, or we'll mm -hmm. say forced to regroup when uh -huh. their original cohort, you know, was attacked um, on, a, on Navarro. So you're right. It's like they have to learn to live new predators, which they're finding out. Apparently, there's you see predators. Last time we saw a sea predator, this time we basically saw the equivalent of a uh, Rodan <laughs> come in. But before I get to that, yeah, okay. yeah. Of course, we have here the very, Aww. very cute. Uh, it's Grogu. Grogu. I know some people think he's, you know. One of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but makes <laughs> it he's cute. He's cute. He's yeah. a puppet. I love, mm -hmm. love, love puppets. So of course I love this this little Me guy. Too. And man, first of all, he's playing with the darn rocks. Yeah. He's playing with the uh, the rocks, which turned out to not be rocks. They actually turned out to be little uh little crabs. Yeah. I, I thought he was forced. Training. I was like, oh, so he's he's trained. He's using his force abilities, but no, mm -hmm. it's, it's these little rocks that, um, uh, well, shells basically that that look like rocks. Mm -hmm. 
of these crab creatures. And I thought that was cute. That was a little Star Wars like nugget that they always kind of put in uh, yeah. in the movie. It also, kind of reminded me of of the uh, the Dark Crystal, where um, mm. you would have all of these plant like animals, uh, these plant like creatures that kind of like get up and like walk away. You know, you would see like a tree get up and walk away. It was so mm -hmm. reminded me of that. Um, and it it uh, it's definitely. Um, perfect for you know for the people who are uh ch childlike at heart a little a little treat for those who are still um uh kids at heart yeah i i, I did i really did like this uh this scene especially since i would spend a, I, I do spend a lot of time at the beach but when i was a kid and i would go to the beach like you see these hermit crabs you know, you didn't think they were live and then you poked it and all of a sudden it like got up and you're just like, that's so cool. We'll keep poking it with a stick. You know? <laughs> and they're crawling to try to, you know, try to get away with you, try to crawl God. into you, kind of crawl to the ocean. It's, I thought it was cool seeing them all get up like, oh God, that kid's freaking gone. Now we can make a break for it, you know? Ah, <laughs> and I thought like... it was just rocks, you know, yeah, in the beginning, yeah. but now, you know, you kind of saw them all crawling away. So that was... That was kind of a, that was kind of cute. And of course, so. Mando is just like, okay, you got to learn how to train with the other, uh, with the other foundlings. Yeah. And, and one thing I just wanted to mention back to, you know, Grogu sitting down with the rocks, he'd rather sit down and play. And, you know, he seemed to be enjoying himself and liking the, the, the idea of getting to know nature and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, here comes daddy who says, you know, uh, it's time to grow up a little bit. Time for you to actually start. You made the choice to be a Mandalorian, so let's get you started. Um, so it, I thought that was kind of um, a, a little, like, nudge to grow. Got to grow up a little bit. And eh, maybe even a nudge to the audience, like, hey, our little, our little baby is going to have to start being a, a little man. Yeah, it's like it's time that you learn the ways of the tribe or learn the ways of uh, of the culture because mm -hmm. in some uh, in some other cultures that that I've seen, it's like there's a very small window of childhood, and then when you get oh, to start, yeah. age, it's like okay, now you have to start learning how to uh, how to how to do these things. Like in some cultures. You know, girls, by the time you get to like six or seven years old, you're watching the kids younger than you. You're oh, yeah. Helping yeah, yeah. with chores. You're, you know, you're doing things and um, you're expected to start to learn the ways of, you know, of your tribe or your group or your culture that um, that you're in. So this wasn't this wasn't um, unexpected in a way. I'm glad they did that. Like we're mm -hmm. saying, it's like, okay, we keep seeing him as like this little cute thing, which he is, but now he actually needs to learn about the customs where he, where he is. And apparently one of these particular oh, customs, which we've seen in numerous places, as especially when you have um, young boys, it's like, okay, now you need to learn how to defend yourself. So, of course, yeah. wrestling, sports, things like that. And Mando's basically like, he's, he's got to he's gotta learn. He's, a, yeah. he's, a, he's part of our cohort because he's been teaching him, kind of like um, recounting to him things about being a Mandalorian, but now he has to kind of learn how to do that stuff on his own. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. He just said, okay, now let's <laughs> play time's over. Let, let you start it's time for you to start training and start show them what you can do. And, um, I loved, I love that. Um, that he's also not easy on, on it either. Like, Oh, let him play for a little bit longer. And um, and it's really for uh, for for Grogu's own good. There are people in the galaxy that still want him. Um, he's never going to find peace anywhere. Um, mm -mm. And, and we know that if he would have stayed with Luke, he was going to die. Um, uh, and if he would, you know, if he stays with Mando, he at least has a fighting chance to make it in the galaxy. So um, 
you know, and he can, and, and with training, he can actually protect himself, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have to wait for Mando or somebody else to save him. He can actually, you know, save himself with the right skills. So I, I like this idea of him mm -hmm. getting Mando training. Because he's going to, because he's going to have to, because um, I know one of my biggest gripes in a way with the Mandalorian is I I knew Grogu would return, but I think he returned a little too quickly. And I kind of wanted a chance to see how he learns or how he hones his skills as, you know, as a Jedi apprentice. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, but you're right. It's like now he's, you know, he's here. He's with the Mandalorians, you know, he's yeah. like, going to kill him. So he needs to learn how to, uh, how to do that. So, yeah, and, and you, I think you're still right about him staying um, with Luke a little bit longer because if at least two, like let's say it was two years or three years or whatever he trained with Luke, let us feel some of that time, number one, and two, allow the puppet to, you know, them to like make him grow a little bit you know yeah Instead of, uh, he, he's really tiny right now let, let him get a little bit bigger for us to like mm -hmm. actually believe that he's gonna be able to handle the training as a, a mandalorian i i still feel like he doesn't know what he's doing he's like looking at at din like is this the right thing or what's going on uh, mm -hmm. he's still yeah he's still kind of clueless in a way about what's why he even needs to do this um mm -hmm. and i i would like more um conscious uh behavior or knowledge um coming from him I, and i think whenever he does get a chance to speak we'll we'll see exactly how much he's thinking how much he's uh how much how developed he is mentally because right now we we can't tell with him uh, not being able to speak how smart he is. Yeah, and I think uh, I agree with you. If he would have he would have been away and then came back and say that he was at least maybe two thirds of Yoda's size, yes, kind of see that um, that difference in like him talking and and uh, and all of that. I think that would have been a much better. Um, match up so mm -hmm. to so to speak even though he's so little because that's oh. the little the uh we'll say the foundling is just like well he's little yeah yeah <laughs> he's, he's little you can't wrestle him yeah. or anything like that so he chooses paint darts you know yeah of, uh, of all things so they're just you know shooting paint darts at each other and he has to go, you know, to daddy for like a little pep talk because he's like, I don't know. And yeah. Mando's like, he's he's got this. Trust me, he's got this. <laughs> and this really did not um did not surprise me. Yeah, me either. Little man just oh, like jumps yeah. up, <laughs> up and over and yeah. back, which I I'm sorry, that was one of the funniest things. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it though? And I think they really need to figure out uh, how to make. I mean, I, he, he's been flipping and doing that kind of stuff for the last um, few like episodes or so. And uh, I, I I like it, but they have to be able to make it look a little more um, possible because it was like it almost looked like somebody was throwing a doll around. <laughs> yes like hey catch yes. <laughs> i mean somebody on twitter sent me a, a, it was on twitter it was like a clip i don't know if you saw it no. but he was uh you know we did the flip and somebody put that to the music from uh super, the super mario game <laughs> <laughs> i oh my gosh I, I i laughed for like 10 minutes because it oh, was man. just so it was so funny but i didn't i really didn't like it was funny, but at the same time, it's kind of like we didn't really 
learn anything in a way. I thought maybe he was going to pick up a big, huge rock and try to hurl it at this kid, at least. Or force choke him. I was like, get or something. Nah, you know, like, no, you boy. can't do that. That's the coward's way. You can't do X, Y. Well, okay, not now. But <laughs> you need to. Use that need, when you, the clone troopers show up. <laughs> yeah, use that after you, after you use these other, you know weapons we'll we'll you know we'll uh we'll work on it but at least that kind of to me would have been a bit more believable um yeah. it's like it was funny to laugh at but i kind of it just kind of reminded me um how they really need to do more of him explain more um about him now that he's front yeah. and center yeah. instead of just kind of like they're... these gimmicky things yeah, and I think they are trying to do that, but I, like, if I could get in the writer's room, or you or I, I mean, I'm sure we'd have different ways of doing that, and and we're spending time on this planet, and we could have had a scene where they're sitting down and kind yeah. of discussing, like, okay, well, this is our strategy, um, and we'll go we'll go deeper into stuff that I'm having an issue with. But yeah, this mm -hmm. this could this really was one of the weakest moments. Even though it was cute, and that's what it was. It was cute. It wasn't yeah. believable. Um, but um, I I thought it was um, what I did enjoy about it was the fact, as you could see in this picture how Grogu is looking up at Din, looking for his approval. Yes. Yeah. Like, and did I do it right this time, Daddy? Yeah, you know? Did I do it right? Oh, did I, did it. It. <laughs> I didn't eat some, I didn't eat some life force <laughs> eggs this time. <laughs> or steal somebody's uh, macarons or, you know, force choke somebody. because Yeah. Were I didn't force Joe, and you, and and uh, it's it's really important because Bo actually told him to be easy on him. Yes, he did. Tell and him I, that. and I was like, oh, she thank God she that. said that because he was going to force choke that little boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm going for the boss move right out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> like the first the first um i mean i was thinking to myself like the first time that um that paintball kind of got him i thought he was just gonna like do i thought he was gonna force choke him or like you know uh, uh use his, the force to kind of push him away um yep. or because he's levitated like two stormtroopers at a time right smashing them up against the wall mm -hmm. i mean he can get savage um, so <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh no, I hope he doesn't like retaliate in a very, you know, Sith like way. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it was, it was definitely a moment that I thought, um, it could have used maybe even a moment like that to show us like, oh, you need to tell Grogu, um, that, that, that kind of, you know, when to use that strong force and when not to use it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, we hope y'all kind of get to together uh, with uh, with him. <laughs> Show us more exposition about him. So yes. So this is Rodan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it comes swooping out of nowhere and, and at uh, in Jurassic Beach. Okay. Yes. These guys are like. I like on... that. That 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 encompasses it. <laughs> Pulls it out perfectly. It's Jurassic Beach, literally. I think we have what, like a mechasaur coming, mecha yeah. coming out. It's like, oh my god, it, it's just insane how um, these guys are on this planet. But that—that's like basically every creature is out to get them, and all of them are oversized, and all of them are are they can't, you know, they can't actually kill. And, um, you know, that's why I was like, yeah, they definitely need Bo because they seem to be un unaware of how to deal with these things at all. They're not, you know, they're warriors, but they're not the elite. And no. I love this scene right here, though. I was like, oh, yeah. they're about to kick some butt. Assemble the rocket packs and, yes, to, and to go and go after them. I'm like, yes, the chase is on. <laughs> We're going to chase this thing down. They're going to 
take down this darn pterodactyl, um, whatever yeah. thing, get this kid, snatch this kid out and fry that thing up for dinner. I'm like, that's what I expected that I was going to see. And uh -huh. I didn't expect to see basically, oh yeah, I'm out of gas. Oh, well, uh, uh, what? I'm like, how did you get back home? Yeah. I, I'm like, yeah. you know, just gonna let the thing go and it's you know and it's got you know and it's got the kid and that is so although cool. I, do like I love this that scene. I do I do like this scene yeah I was like yeah they're gonna get him yeah they're gonna um, get him yeah they're gonna do that and they're gonna you know and they're gonna come they're gonna and come back look at all the gear on this guy they don't have any like a uh, booster fuel um extras um, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, what do you mean you're out? You didn't bring extra bar your buddies and tell him, you know, to, to walk back. Cause they yeah. were adamant about you have, we have to go and get this uh, foundling cause whatever that thing is, it was going to eat them. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, we got to go and get them. But it seemed like, oh, well, we're out of a, uh, we're out of gas. We yeah. might as well like give up. And that to me seemed very un Mandalorian. Uh, very very Mandalorian like and, yeah and you can't yeah you know these guys have had entire wars on their planet mm -hmm. where they're you know using these jetpacks and you mean to tell me that they go out within four minutes like uh it, it's it was poorly written this this particular scene i understand all of the character development they were doing here what they were meaning to do uh, mm -hmm. And I, I respect it, but I just think that uh, a lot of the logistics of this is um, is just awful. But I had fun with it. I really did. I had fun with this because I was like, this is almost, and somebody said this, I didn't say it, Saturday morning cartoon for kids. Yes. For kids. It is, you're not meant to think about the logistics of this. Uh, or use common sense because it is just like uh, th this right this everything that happened up until the point where their jets um, uh, go go out really should not have happened uh, and it should have just went right into the scene where they're they're taking down the pterodactyl with the kid in in, in the claw in the claw and mm -hmm. I just I think it should have just went straight to that and um, no, we have this entire scene in the middle, which I feel is more like filler. It's like, again, it's character development, but it's also um, it's also filler. Um, and it could have been done yeah. a different way. Could have been done a totally different way. And I, I so agree with you because I'm thinking we're going to get to see this amazing rescue scene they are going to go and rescue this family and they're going out there on jetpacks they're now matched with something that's in the air not say yeah <laughs> they're in in the air and they're gonna make that you you know like the rescue you see in the action movies where mm -hmm. you know the fire firefighter goes in a burning building and stuff <laughs> starts to collapse and they're just like oh no they're both dead and he comes running out and he's got the kid with them and you're just like yes yes yeah that's what I thought we were going to get with this. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like if you got that very same scene where the, there's a fire and somebody said, okay, we're going to go home, rest, and then we're going to come back tomorrow and save the boy then. Like, that's what that scene really feels like. Like, somebody was like, it, you can't, it, like, it doesn't make sense. And you know what, being that it is, a fantasy you could say there's so many ways that you can say um this went down but i i definitely feel for it 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 just felt awkward and strange that mm -hmm. they didn't go straight for it right um and but i i have to say this i i did like what the filler was trying to say about the characters because um bo -Katan comes back from her her thing instead of saving the child right then which she could have probably done maybe not on her own but mm -hmm. um like tell us something um she comes back and she says she has a plan and she does a pitch meeting <laughs> basically <Yeah>. literally 
<laughs> just like, okay, here are the plans. And so they're like, they're, they're so clueless that they've never tried to do this. This is how bad these guys are. They're, they're not, I'm just saying, they're not the fighter, the, the elite fighters. The, these are, this is the D team uh, for, for the Mandalorians. They are not, um, I mean, they should be shameful to call themselves Mandalorians at this I, point. I, I totally, I totally agree with you. When this went down, they should have been calling audibles. Basically, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Military. Okay. You are exactly right. They should have swooped down in there like, uh, what do they call them? Like the uh, space Marines. (laughs) That's That's exactly. That's what what they are. That's what they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be the mm-hmm. the top fighters. They're supposed to be a warrior ra- race of people. They can they can fight their way through anything, and they're they really haven't shown anything great um, at all in this season at all. Like and they should have been better. They were like what is it season one? They they a lot of them died in season yeah. one. And a lot of them died, and I'm like, well, that's because I think these guys, they have the religious part down. They have a lot of the, um, the uh, what do you call, um, uh, 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 the culture um, down, mm-hmm. like the, the, the myths and stuff down. But they don't have, um, and they have the creed down, but they don't have the, the fighting ability um, and somehow they've been the ones who have been able to get together and, mm-hmm. and at least mobilize, but they don't have the same uh, ethic, fighting ethic as the Mandalores from, uh, uh, from Bo-Katan's time period. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's something up with these guys. That's why they need bo to yeah. whip them into shape a little bit. Um, yeah, and they were impressed by her. They were they were very impressive. Like, okay, well, we'll do you know? Yeah, and that she was, sounds like a plan. Yeah, they took took on to it uh, very easily, and um, I mean, look at this guy in the, in the back there, um, pa, uh, Vizla. He mm-hmm. should have been he should have been the leader of this and said, look, this is what yes. we but. He's like, yeah, well, they've been doing this all the time. There's nothing we can do. <laughs> When I heard that, I'm just like, okay, I can understand the first time they picked one of y'all off. I can even understand the second time yeah. they picked one of you guys off. By the second time, y'all should be like, look, okay, this is what we're going to do. If one of them swoops out after us again, here's the plan. The plan, yeah. But I, they're I just, don't know. oh, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. I'm like, there's what? We can do. And I'm trying to figure out if that little boy is like, they soak him in butter because all the creatures want that little boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they only want, they like, want that little nice boy. So I'm going to get him and I'm going to bring him back to, uh, <laughs> my, back to my babies. I'm going to eat him and I'm going to regurgitate him to feed my little <laughs> Ashley's. <laughs> But you are so right. They just seem to not know um, what to do mm-hmm. or refuse to do it. And Bo-Katan seems to be the only one that's like, okay, look, all right, I'm going to go there, uh, go scale that ridge and uh, go and get them since it's been like, what, 24 hours, I guess, since it, you know, since it happened. So they're kind of uh, taking their time uh, yeah. about it. It's like, okay, can we, can we get get going it like kind of it took the it took the wind out of something mm-hmm. that should have been super action fa- super action packed and fast paced like every second counts there's something going on mm-hmm. and it's kind of just uh we're relaxed regroup yeah and yeah. then i guess we'll uh then i guess we'll go uh we'll and go get something it. really cool about this picture this moment here um grogu is uh looking at the um at the ship and he's wanting to go and the armor says you want to go with them and i'm like wait a minute does the armor is the armor like psychic or something or a jedi or something how does she know what he's thinking or and or does she like 
understand his little gurgles and things because she seemed to talk right to like to him like she like they're speaking their own language Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know like the clicks and beeps of the the robots that that people can't translate so Mm -hmm. i i don't know like there's something going on with that armor or with that this i mean she's been sketchy all (laughs) <laughs> I agree. The fact that you even flip it, you first you tell tell uh you tell Manda or you tell Din Djarin that uh the home world is poisoned. And then you just happen to have something to analyze if the water sample he brought back was truly the living waters mm-hmm. on Dandelar, and she's just like, oh well, you are redeemed, and that seemed to be it. No one questioned. He wasn't like you mind telling me why you basically lied to me or concealed yeah. certain truths about, you know, about that? Or yeah. Do you and, do you really know what's going on? It's something's up with this chick. Yeah, and her answer for everything is this is the way. This is the way. <laughs> I, I, you that, I said so. No, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way. It's very, really, very cult like in a yeah. In a way. Um, yeah, it, I thought it was very interesting. But yeah, he if he does really want to go with them, it's showing you know that he's he's um, he, he does he is up for the challenge mm-hmm. of being uh, a wanting to be a part of the Mandalorian culture, uh, wanting to be a part of the excitement, and uh, of course wanting to be with his dad. I think that's yeah. the number one one. That's the number one thing. Because he idolizes his, uh, this scene his right dad. Here. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to learn some more about how to be a man. Yeah, when he's, he's walking, he's like this. <laughs> he's got this little strut thing going on. I, did, I, I loved it. I, I died laughing. It was so good. Um, I Look, my thing with this series or with this episode in particular is I had fun watching it even when they screwed up. Uh, or I thought, you know, hey, they're going to fix this or tweak, tweak this. I, I had fun with it, to be very honest with you. Um, so if anybody, you know, in the chat, you guys uh, will know that I definitely in, enjoyed the film, even though I have uh, the, 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 the episode, even though I have serious uh, criticisms about it. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I thought it was uh, that the puppet is is cute and funny i i don't know there. if yeah i don't know how they're going to be able to go through with the rest of it they may have to do a combination of cgi as he gets older because um right now it it's cute but i don't know how long they'll be able to keep it up yeah because he's got to um he's got to grow up yeah and uh we need we need to see him progress beyond just being you know just being a baby. It's been you know it's on year three. Yeah, three on. year old kids <laughs> are talking and <laughs> negotiating, uh, you know, by uh, by then and starting to learn things about how to you know how to li- how to live in a family, how families live, what's expected of you, learning, you know, those exactly beginning um lessons that you need to learn and i do like how the armorer she'll she started talking about you know everything starts from like the ore and she's forging things and oh it was really beautiful you know all of the heat and everything it's like mm-hmm. we're we're hardened through like trials and all uh-huh. of that and then she puts it like in the uh i don't know was it the forger or the pen? whatever it is that just you know basically what it does to hammer the impurities out of the um out of the molten metal and you can see grogu just kind of like what weakness do i have yeah you know what yeah. weakness what trial have i been through to make me stronger and then that's when you start seeing the flashbacks mm-hmm. to what happened at uh at the Jedi, the Jedi Temple. So Order 66. You know, can I just say how many um it, this this is just me. <laughs> and, and I and I have to do I have to do a little bit of a mini rant here. Okay, so when I saw Revenge of the Sith, I was under the impression that all of those younglings in the Jedi Temple got whacked. The mm. only one left 
was the one that was protecting Bail Organa so he could escape. And he went out. That was the last jungling that we saw. He went down swinging. And if it wasn't for him, Bail Organa would not have been able to escape. And then after what happened at the Jedi Temple, Yoda and Obi-Wan set up a message to tell everyone to stay away from the Jedi Temple. Mm. So with these um, younglings so, who somehow miraculously survived Order 66, like with Brogu, like with uh, Riva in Kenobi, in a way, I, I don't like how it, it like lessens the emotional impact that we felt from Revenge of the Sith because it was just like, that was just such a mass destruction of, um, of innocent life. So while mm. I'm not averse to hearing his, uh, his story, Reba, that was different. I was just like, come on now. We did it with Grover. Why, yeah. <laughs> why do we, why do we, why do we, why do we freaking have to have, you know, another one? Um, it was still interesting to see how they would, uh, how they would explain it. So I know some people probably in the chat are probably like, yeah, well, you know, there's some wiggle room. Yeah, there kind of, there kind of is. So while yeah. I did like this scene, I did like it. It was, it was frenetically paced the way that, you know, the uh, Rodan <laughs> A story should have been, should have been paced. That sense yeah. of urgency. Yeah. I did yes. have this sense of urgency in this scene, which I really, did uh which i really did really did like even mm -hmm. though i just got issues with them retcon in order uh order 66 what yeah. did you think during uh during this flashback scene um i loved it um i guess my uh, my attachment to order 66 is not the same because i hated order 66 um you're supposed uh, to <laughs> yeah well i mean yeah I, <laughs> well, I think I, there's there's i i i hated the idea of order 66 and, mm -hmm. and yeah you're supposed to hate it and um i think it was it's it for me it's nice to know some people survived um even though it really is like okay and how Okay, how did they survive? Because it looked pretty like much like a sealed doom to me. Yeah. And <laughs> meanwhile, you know, I I still there's still questions about Grogu. Like he was not kept. Was he not kept with the other younglings? That and is an excellent question because I would think that he that he would. Granted, those of you who read EU novels probably know more, but from what I saw with just the movies, you saw the small um, like crush that they would. Well, it's another word for nursery, but they call it a crush. So they would have like groups of younglings together, probably similar in age or similar in ability, um, mm -hmm. kind of like training together in small, you know, in small, uh, in small groups. So I don't know if he was isolated for a reason or if he was with a particular group that was attacked and yeah. they managed to get him to get him out. Because if I go back to Revenge of the Sith, one of the scenes that I remember seeing was when you saw Obi-Wan and you saw Yoda and they were going through the Jedi temple and you saw just like dead bodies, just, you know, just yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So that's a very good question. Yeah. Was he, was he isolated? Was he kept away from? And I, I think them? that might explain why he was able to escape. And there was a like specific attention towards him. And we still don't know who is his, you know, where does he come from? Is he a clone or is he a, an actual, um, you know, does he have, did he have an actual mother and father? Was he an experiment? Um, there's, there's, that still is a mystery. And, and I think I, I like the fact that that's still kind of out there. We can still learn that about him mm -hmm. um, uh, as, as sort of like unfolding, but the way that this season is going, I'm just really fearful we're not going to get a season four. 
Yeah. So it this, is. this is really like alarming. They have to shape up these stories because right now we don't we don't have a story. We just have a bunch of things that happen. But nobody's what are the goals of our our protagonist at this moment? Like what is right. what is what is what is uh Din Djarin, what is he going to do? What is his plan to do what? See, we've always had that, like, okay, he's he wanted to do this and he wanted to do mm -hmm. that. Where where's his motivation? And the only person that we have a motivation for maybe is Bo, Bo Katan. Uh we we're not even sure if she's really after ruling over a man war anymore. Right. Uh, we're not, we're not even sure about all that stuff. And, um, as far as Grogu is concerned, we don't know where we, we don't know what he's going, what he wants because he can't speak yet. No, he can't speak in the exposition, um, isn't enough. I mean, with this, with this flashback scene, of course they are showing you instead of telling you, but in a, but in a way it's. It kind of seems to exist just for existing, and it doesn't answer a question further on or something, or answer, or I guess I should say, it doesn't expose anything about Grogu's motivation. Yes. Yeah. It's just except kind for, of. Ex except for oh, the fact that he's totally traumatized, right, by yes. this event. This event Com screwed him up. This is the reason. Yeah. yeah, completely traumatized. And of course they have here, um, this is Ahmad Best, who played yes. uh, Jar Jar Binks. I don't know why some people had a bug up their butt about Jar Jar Binks. I actually thought he was funny. <laughs> I thought it was cool. Um, and I I thought I thought the character was like, oh, okay, you know, that's what you want to go for. Okay. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, kind of laughed it off. And me and my friends made jokes when we saw it, you know, in the, uh, in the theater. But that was the extent of it. I honestly didn't know who this guy was until um, I checked on social media, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a mod, uh, it's mod best." So basically, his character, and I'm forgetting the name because uh, I really Killerin didn't make it. Beck. Killerin? And Killerin? Okay. Killerin Beck. So he, so he, he was, was the one who got uh, who got Grogu out. Whoops, mm -hmm. sorry, I kind of went a little little too far. And I speed up a, a little bit. He's actually a teacher at the temple. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he winds up getting some of the uh, guards from Naboo wow. to help get him uh, off the planet. Mm -hmm. And gorgeous chase scene oh, through, that was great. Uh, through Coruscant. I mean, that's what that we needed last. That's what we needed last. Uh, that's what episode. we needed last week. That's what <laughs> we needed this week with the you know with the darn monster. I have to be honest. I didn't even care about. The kid being the foundling oh, being taken yeah. by uh, the pterodactyl monster because this was dead. scene was good. Yeah, I did too. I was like, oh well, he's gone. You know, <laughs> that it was more interesting seeing this particular scene. And then when we come back, mm -hmm. the armorer is basically saying, you know, you'll grow into your armor, and mm -hmm. you know, as you learn more about being a Mandalorian, and she gives him the little, you know, little uh, little shield oh. that he's so proud to have. Yes. You know, on his uh, on his body. Of course, you get to see oh. chain mail. Chain mail. So <laughs> it's so big, but she's like, you'll grow into it. And which kind of brings the other question: How does she know? What is he going to have a growth spurt in a little? Yeah, <laughs> in a little yeah. bit. Well, I, I guess she's figuring he's so small. He's got to be. Uh, yeah, he's got to be a you know the smallest he possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, like he's going to grow. But I, I wanted to say one thing about this metal piece. Mm -hmm. um, the armorer seems to give people these metal pieces after they've done something because um, she gives uh, Grogu this piece after he wins that battle with the, the young one, uh, the foundling. And mm -hmm. so it, it's like sort of like the more he does things within the tribe, the more he'll get pieces of armor um, to fully, you know, sort of come out with this Mandalorian outfit that mm -hmm. we're gonna see on this little thing. It's gonna be hilariously he cute. All his shiny vest guard, <laughs> like, yeah, I whipped your ass. I got this piece. I whipped you. I got this. Piece. <laughs> I'm 
just like my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I but I like that analogy because reinforcing what he's supposed to learn as a Mandalorian and also rewarding him uh-huh. for um little rewarding by little. him for you know what what he did. It's kind of like giving a little kid a gold star for doing your chores. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, eventually he'll be, you know, he can have a whole suit. But uh, one other thing I wanted to say was um, during that time, uh, when, just a little bit before, she said that as Mandalorians, uh, what was the exact title? I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, that they, um, they define themselves by the trials and adversity. And I think that's the reason why they stay on uh Terra plant that terrible planet that they're on uh on Jurassic Beach mm. is that it is giving them the trials of of the fear of death and that's why all of the them tried to attack that crocodile even though they had no chance yeah it's starting it- to like make sense psychologically by these <laughs> you know they're not that the smartest or the sharpest tool in the te- in the in the shed, these guys. But they have a lot of heart and courage, and they're hoping to forge themselves mm-hmm. into uh, warriors. Very well said. I like how you put that. Thank you. I like how you put that. <laughs> so they go off to go get the kid, and honestly, a day later, <laughs> day day later, they've had a chance to like shave, shower, and. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> they had a uh, I guess we'll go get them. <laughs> you know, and then it, I think they, I think it was revealed that it, either it was Paz Vistula's ward or because he said, you know, he's my son. It's like, is he your I'm not even going to get into what we talked about in the Dark Council with regards to <laughs> hat and helmets. You have to go watch it. But basically, we just went off on a riff that was absolutely hilarious. Like, is that really his kid? Well, how can they wear their helmets all the time? How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a rabbit hole. I, I swear yeah. it should be a robot chicken skin. It was just so absolutely crazy. Oh yeah, there's there's logistically none of this makes sense. Um, no. But, no. No, it doesn't. And I really feel they painted themselves, or well, let's just say John Favreau painted himself into a corner. Yeah. When they said basically, you know, Mandalorian can't take their helmet off. Yeah. Ever. I mean, and and I think uh, you know, it, it makes for a good story piece if if you if you word it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Um, like they can't take their helmet off in public. Right, but among you know that that'll be like okay, yeah, they can't take their pub their helmet off in public, um, and, and what it signifies to keep it on, like yes, that is like is it a badge of honor? It is a it, it is what is it to 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 keep on your helmet? What does it mean? And see, it would have been really great if we had like a campfire moment where they, I thought this was what, what we were going to get. We were going to get a moment yeah. where they can talk more about the culture and what it means to be a Mandalorian to this sect. And we didn't get that. Um, and even it would have been nice to hear Mandal, uh, Din's view on all of this too and try to explain some of it to uh, Bo Katan and explain it to us too in the in the meantime, but mm-hmm. um, I, it, it, they missed another opportunity. But we did get the explanation that uh, of how Mandalorians eat, because it, it was a very burning question by the public: mm-hmm. uh, How do Mandalorians eat their food? And they go to a quiet corner where no one can see them. And they take off their helmets and they, yeah. shove, they, shove, and they put the helmets back on. <laughs> and I'm like, I got my food, bye. Get <laughs> and you know, and this is like eating together with people is one of the most socially bonding things that you could do. So their their culture is like, how are they bonding besides like fighting each other on the beach and, and saying this is the way? Like we need more context that's based in reality uh to connect these guys uh to us mm-hmm. to so we want to be part of the creed you know exactly exactly that's a cultural portion of the mandalorian that isn't 
um, so that isn't being adequately uh, adequately explained. And I know oh, some yeah. people read like the Mandalorian EU novels. I started reading one, but didn't get a chance to, uh, didn't get a chance to finish it, but they were very quite sociable among their clan, you know, oh, where yeah. they had their rituals and how, you know, how they, uh, how they interacted with, uh, with each other. And I think in the rush to put the Mandalorian into a series that they miss the cultural part because the cultural part is what we can identify with when there's it's not exactly the same but it's something similar yeah. dining together is something that pretty much regardless of what culture you are in you understand that that is a social eh, a time of socialization mm -hmm. a time of accepted um socialization exchange of ideas kind of like emotional check-ins um, you know, with uh, with people, but with that part gone, it's it's again, it makes it hard to identify with the uh, with the Mandalorian. Yeah, it, it it's a shame. I mean, and like, how do they sleep with those things? Um, yeah, I know. Like, how do sleep they sleep with them things <laughs> out? <laughs> it's just, it sounds like a crazy question, but it's just like it doesn't. It doesn't seem to make doesn't seem to make a uh, doesn't seem to make it just it's does not Star seem Wars to make Google yeah it, exactly exactly because from what I remember um, of George Lucas saying when he was interviewed and he's talked because there's like tons of like these alien races and cultures and they have to make sure that those cultures are distinct. Like the Jawas have a distinct look. They have a distinct attitude. They have a distinct, um, a distinct, um, you know, MO, um, even the sand people. That's why Kenobi was just like sand people walk in single file. These band, yeah. the tracks are all over the place. So there's something wrong. So that tells exactly. you there's a certain cultural standard or a cultural norm for sand people and for that particular uh, that particular culture. And George was very proud. It used to seem like to me how they could come up with these different cultures and for Star Wars, but root them in a lot of norms that um, that would make sense to, that would make yeah. sense to us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because if they walk in single file, they can hide their tracks, have their numbers. Mm -hmm. And nobody will be able to tell how many there were. And exactly. It has a function, you know? Yes, it has a function. They're very nomadic. They're not hitting large targets like a, you know, like the sand, like the Jawa transport. That thing is huge. That's like a moving junkyard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's and not it's something. Fast, too. That, yeah, it's fast. <laughs> they got little holes where they can poke out and shoot people. <laughs> like the Mandalorian. Yeah. That was that was a great uh episode. Oh heck yeah, I laughed my ass. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really good so one. So it was just so bang on the way the Jawas would uh would behave. So they're scaling, you know, trying to find the uh trying to find um Rodan's nest. <laughs> I'm gonna keep calling it Rodan because dang on it, I like Kaju, like Kaju uh, films. Yeah. Rodan is, is all that. I oh, found the heat signal. Yeah. <laughs> so we found that. My child is in there. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It took me a day to figure out what the heck we were gonna do. What happened to <laughs> don't make a lot of noise or it's gonna the thing is gonna kill the child? What happened to all of that? He's like screaming and yelling, get, get, hold me back. I'm glad it wasn't just me. I'm just like, you do know that thing swooped down, that it is, it is a, what, what would you call it? It is a predator, predator bird, like an osprey or a hawk or, you know, or even an owl. They are actively searching for prey and especially yeah. if it's a female trying to get food for her baby oh, she's yeah, three times it. as dangerous so uh you're gonna want to sneak up on that not make a whole yeah. lot of <laughs> not <of> noise <laughs> he's my child <laughs> i la i laughed so hard <laughs> <This scene> is... <laughs> <laughs> i was just like 
Bro, are you for real right now? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh man, yeah. I'm just like I I can't I'd love to see video at a writer's room when they came up with this one. I just oh, I but, just don't get it. But you could see this all being animated and how fun that would be as an animation, right? This whole storyline. And oh that, yeah, that's why I'm just sort of like, this is definitely cartoons. This is like uh live action cartoon uh stuff, and it's it's fun. But it's it's definitely not uh, sophisticated at all or believable. We've been watching two seasons now. We should get believable. I agree. We are invested. Don't you know? Don't treat us like five years old. That's exactly right. It's like we're coming here for com. You know, for um, interesting. Even if stories are complex. You know, the simplicity of it, everything should uh, should flow. It should make logical sense. It shouldn't treat its audience like, um, oh, yeah, we're going to treat you like, uh, we're going to treat you like five-year-olds and basically give you a, uh, give you a story that's pretty much, you know, just, to, uh, I'm looking at Land of the Lost when I look at this. <laughs> no, but it's, it's like, it shows up and then it's like, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? <laughs> That was Jurassic Park. <laughs> that one. I was like, is it going to throw up like mushy, you know, body parts? No, mm -hmm. it's just a whole child. Help me. Like, what is going on here? That is so unrealistic. Um, now, now, granted, it is an alien bird species on an alien planet. Right. Okay, so maybe maybe it doesn't just do the same thing as a real bird, but um, I'm sorry, it it just took me out of the moment right there when I, there there there's the child just like help me, and it's it's fully like it's been in. I don't, we don't know if the kid has been in the the bird's stomach. It's like the Sirlac pit in there. Yeah. <laughs> when they like kind of store children inside there and cough them back up whatever they want. It's just really kind of weird. Um, or is it, did it, did it have like, does it have like another place where it, 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 um, it sleeps, which makes no sense. Why have a huge nest like that? So, I mean, where was it just hanging out with the child? Like, the I don't get it. I don't understand that piece of the story. And I've never seen in all my years of watching uh, Wild Kingdom and other nature shows, <laughs> usually when a predator catches prey, um, they're not letting it live no. forever. No. Uh, they'll like injure it. Like, Back well, end. if I take my cat, for instance, because he's a ace mouse hunter and <laughs> even when he, i did catch him in the middle of killing a mouse i mean he didn't kill it right away no he broke its neck oh, and God. he played around with it that thing was not going anywhere <laughs> it was injured so he could oh, i'm gonna have fun picking it up shaking it around and throwing it. i'm just like i i, I can't i can't oh, I, had, I can't i had to drown that mouse and put it out of its misery but that's what they did because they don't want their prey getting away yeah yeah. So why is especially um, a bird of prey, obviously, is this is even though it's an alien, why the heck with that? I was expecting for them to find nothing but a helmet and yeah. the breastplate with the paint uh, stains on it. Well, and there was uh there was a helmet in the um in the nest. There was mm -hmm. there was a little helmet in there, and I was like, oh, that's him. They, they, you know, he's gone. Um, or at best, if he was still alive, hiding somewhere. Um, yeah. He, you know, I, I just, and it's unbelievable um, what happens. But, you know, the chase scene was actually quite fun. And I, like I said, uh, the, the first chase scene with them going towards uh, following the bird should have mm -hmm. tied right into them. Like this scene where they finally get to attack yeah. the bird and just like skip all that stuff in between. Uh, let's get right to the juice and 
uh, totally it all and and take down the bird um and that was really good it also was hilarious when that um the jurassic uh gator uh came out. i was dying laughing was um, i the only one that kept hearing the jurassic park theme when they were bringing this <laughs> these suckers out of here i'm like dee, 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 dee. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, was but, <laughs> that, that scene where where the gator comes out was just like the ending of the the Jurassic World. Was it, it was yes. Jurassic Park where the big T Rex like grabs all of the uh, the little um, you know? I was just like, you guys, like, what is going on here? This is hilarious, but um. Uh, it was entertaining, entertaining, I have to say. Uh, and yeah, these things are so ugly. It's so hard to look at them. They huh. are, they're not even so, they're not even in the category of they're so ugly, they're cute. No. I'm just like, how are you going to make these anything. things into Mandalorian? You better fry them up and eat them. <laughs> yeah, well, I would say people... to dinner. A lot of people are saying that these um, creatures are going to, they're going to fly them. Uh, use them as um as uh for traveling so because and, and this is actually kind of good for the mandalorians so that is, far is yeah. that they can train these things and fly them the uh they'll have something to to like if there are other birds like this on on the planet they'll mm -hmm. be able to protect themselves you know? that is true that and is that, true so that that's the theory then but um my question is, where did they get the meat to kill, to, to offer to these little things? I don't know. Maybe they killed it on the way there. I don't, yeah. I don't know. They probably said, hmm, or better yet, probably something already was killed by their mother. So no, we'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, we'll go ahead and take that with us to go, yeah. with, uh, go and go and feed them, go and feed them with. But uh, yep. And there's. Bo, Bo Katan, and yep. of course she gets a piece of armor, and um, she gets one uh, one piece, and then I think the other piece she asked if it could be made to look like the mythosaur, like the mythosaur, the if no one had claimed it, and the armor was like the mythosaur belongs to all Mandalorian, all yeah. I love and, that statement. Uh, yeah, she said it belongs to all Mandalorian. And basically, Bo Katan says, you know, I saw Mythosaur. And the armor's like, well, some of us have had many visions. I'm like, uh -huh. why does this chick she, beat around yeah. a freaking bush so much? It's like, no, I, I saw yeah. a Mythosaur. Yeah. And her answer, the armor answer, what she uses to answer everything. This is the this way. Is the way. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is the way, but <sighs> this is the Yeah. I mean, I think the armor, um, the way, she, the fact that she doesn't believe that, she, that bo -Katan did not see the Mythosaur makes me wonder if the, the armor actually believes in the, these myths that she's, um, handing down to people you know what i mean like i think she knows these myths but she she may not actually believe them like din Djarin is a believer mm -hmm. um but the the armor is not i don't know why bo katan decided she was just gonna say uh this to the armor and now they're besties like i i yeah i, I think it might have and i'm just being uh, uh guesstimating here that she may have been trying to gauge where the armorer stood and what she knew about the mythosaur like just to pull out some more information about um mm -hmm. uh, what it means and what um you know what maybe her next moves could be and what What's i was on? really oh sorry go ahead Oh no, you go, you go. I've been talking about it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I, I find it interesting. Um, I, I, the armor, I'm almost pretty much like calling her the matriarch of the clan that basically 
her word as law. Mm -hmm. They're not really questioning, um, questioning her. Everyone took as gospel that, oh, Mandalore, you know, it's poisoned, you know, the mines are, the mines, you know, the springs aren't there. They're poisoned. Guess what? Yeah. And then he decides, <laughs> Mando decides to go there anyway. Oh, there's proof of it. Yeah. Okay. It's like, okay, so why did you tell people to stay away from that? Mm -hmm. And I think Jin said, what, you know, why did you tell people, you know, to, uh, to stay away when there's obviously nothing wrong um, with the planet? And I'm thinking that some kind of control factor, because she's not very forthcoming with information unless it's something that she wants to impart to people. Yeah. And I honestly believe that the armor is well aware of the mythosaurus existence. This is just yeah. me. I think that she knows about it, but it's kind of like, I would say in the category of classified information. Oh, Only yeah. certain people I like that. who need to know it will, the only people who need to know will need to, will need to know. Because if I remember from what you were saying, spotting of the mythosaur means that basically a resurgence of the Mandalorian, the people take that as a sign where, hey, I get to take over everybody. Yeah. What would that information do? So I'm wondering if when it comes to the armorer, she's keeping that information secret because of what could happen if it got out. Because mm -hmm. if, I remember, if I understand correctly, the Mandalorian are pretty much scattered and it's obviously yeah. this sect really doesn't want much to do with the other ones that are yes. part of quote unquote uh, quote unquote the way and of course Boba Fett was a uh was a clone. Well actually no no sorry Boba Fett it's like he he yeah, yeah he was yeah he was a clone he was a clone of Jango Fett right so he wasn't a true like blood Mandalorian from what mm. I, from what I understand. He was a Mandalorian by adoption of culture, not yes. born into it from, uh, from what I, from what I understand. So he was a bit, so he was a bit different because Boba Fett had no problem taking that helmet off. Yeah. <laughs> Zero yeah. problem, you know, yeah. taking, a, taking and, that helmet off, walking around like, yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, based on some of the the older things like rebels, they were taking off their helmet all the time. Mm -hmm. So this this group almost wants to be um, s segregated, and maybe she wants them to just be on their own. Um, um, it, it's possible mm. that she doesn't want them to even pursue Mandalorian. So this is my conundrum with this episode. Um, I think this is the last scene in the episode, right? I believe, I believe it is. Let me see. Yeah. Well, of course, we see Bo Katan, and then of course you see the symbol of the clan of oh. their, you know, of their particular cohort. Um, and and if you notice that that is doesn't have any color on it, it's silver, just like uh, Din Djarin's. Yes. So I, I like the idea or the sort of twinkling that now she's also part of his clan too. Like, mm -hmm. um, and it would be uh, uh, sort of uh, a moment of that. And, but so my biggest problem or issue with this particular episode is definitely where's the scene where um, the Mandalorians are excited because Mandalore is not poisoned and hey you know the the living waters actually exist like there's no celebration of that there's no mention of it they, they don't plan on going back to mandalore at all um a discussion about that would be really awesome like hey we eventually want to get back to mandalore but we we want to grow our ranks first that would be a you know, a little some give me, give me, give me something. Give me, give me, give me. Fuel up the ship. Let's go. Shoot. Let's go home. You know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I get it. Yeah, it's just like where's the earth? Everyone's I'll like, think. oh, okay, yeah, he's back. Yeah, yeah. True, true waters. He bathed in, you know, Lake 
you know, the waters of Lake Minnetonka. He's all right. He's redeemed. All right, let's go back to what we were doing. It's just like, no, that's information. Yeah. That yeah. that's a that's a huge ex you know huge exposition. That's something that we found out where we thought it was one thing, and it turns out that it's the other thing. So yeah. what's the result? What's the consequence of that information getting out? I would have loved for the for this clan for everybody to be at each other's throats or basically at the armorer's throat because why did you lie to us? Yeah, and or, they didn't go there. Or, or even like, oh yeah, we we were wrong about it. Okay, well, uh, yeah. what are we gonna do next? So that's like that's the thing about this whole thing. We don't know what's gonna happen next. We could spend another day at Carasans. We can spend mm -hmm. a, a, a day at uh, Navarro. We don't know what is gonna happen or what is our character's motivation. Where are yes. they planning on doing? There's mm -hmm. no. Um, connection to the characters really and we bear like they're the only person we barely have a connection to is Bo and we still don't even know what her plans are what are her designs mm -hmm. okay we don't there it, that's my frustration with this and we're on episode four and we did we should at least know that much um mm -hmm. Like I said, I enjoyed this episode so very much. It was so much fun for me. Even the parts where it was ridiculous, I enjoy all that stuff too. Um, just you know, because it was ridiculous, and um, uh, it, it it just was kind of frustrating at the end. I was like, okay, well, that was a nice ride, but where are we where are we going? Yes, it's um, how do you put it? When you read about the elements of a elements of a story, it's like you have the introduction, um, you have the initial conflict, mm -hmm. and then you have the rising action that's going on. In that conflict, you understand what it is that the protagonist wants and what it is that the antagonist is about. So we know that even yeah, if it's, exactly. hey, there's this treasure, it's guarded by this fire breathing dragon. How are we going to go get it? You already know what the motivation, the primary mm -hmm. motivation is. Like, yeah, they want to go and get this treasure. Guess what? They got this fire-breathing dragon in the way. So we expect for everything to lead up to to lead up to that. Yeah. And they're not they're not get they're not giving us that. They're it's like we're getting story, story. for mm -hmm. the sake of story and not a story for With the sake of you know, finding out what the motivation is. You're not giving us a true story. You're giving us these little snippets in isolation, kind of mm -hmm. like, I call them like sitcom bites. Yeah. Everything's solved in 30 minutes. I mean, yeah. to the credit, they do solve and wrap everything up in 30 minutes, but it's, this is Star Wars. Yeah. This is a bigger story. You think of Where's, it like a soap opera, even 30 yeah. minutes to an hour of a soap opera. Guess what? It, you know what motivations are going oh, yeah. on. Oh, soap operas are great at that. And Ugh. look, the other thing is, I mean, because uh, just piggybacking off of what you just said about characters having motivations. That's where the conflict comes from. And there's no conflict. There's no conflict. What we're getting is moments that happen and get solved. You know, uh, a day in the life, uh, but we're not getting, like, what is the overarching theme? Why should we be worried about these people? Why should we care about what's going on? We don't know what Mando's doing or thinking. You like, right. we, we, like, he usually has a mission of something that, is going on and we're cheering him on to make that happen there's none of that exactly. here we don't know what he's doing we haven't he hasn't even said much uh, uh more than like three lines in this episode what didn't jaren our character that we love so much he only says a few lines in the mm -hmm. episode like you can't go on like this so episode five they really need to bring it they really need to bring it, or they're gonna it, they're gonna tank any chance that they're gonna be able to do a season four, um, uh, and it's sad because we had a great run, 
uh, you know, at, at mm-hmm. some point. And, and there are great elements in these episodes uh, that we've been seeing, but nothing to tie it together. We still don't know what's happening with the pirates. Exactly. We still don't know what's happening with IG-11. That was such a mm-hmm. big piece of episode one. What's going on yeah. with that? It's like, um, again, I'm seeing some of the same things happen in season four, I mean, excuse me, season three that happened in season two. And I almost dropped out of season two because it's just like we're halfway through the season. All we're seeing is filler, no sense of urgency. We don't know what the motivation is. Why should I keep watching if there's no advancement towards resolving that conflict? And unfortunately, I see this season headed down the same path. So you're correct, Retro Nerd Girl. With this next episode that's coming out, it's going to be go or no go with that one. Is it going to be enough to keep us watching? Or are they going to ratchet up the conflict and clearly show what the motivation is going to be for this show? Or are they just going to kind of give us, you know, something just more of a more of the same, which doesn't, which doesn't bode well, because this was actually a show that I was really looking forward to when it came out. And I'm disappointed that we're not getting what, uh, what we should be getting. So while I don't think that this episode is nearly as bad as episode three, um, this one, this one out of 10, I'd probably give it like about a, about a five. There were parts that I enjoyed in, uh, in isolation. Ouch. Yeah, I know people are like, oh my God. Yeah, that hit me in the ribs. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like, you know what? And, and I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback off of something, off of something you said. If this was like a cartoon, yeah, I'd freaking give it like, like an eight or a nine because, because of that. But because it's drama, because it really didn't, it moved the needle a little bit, um, but not a lot. I just, yeah, I just, yeah, maybe, okay, I'll give it a six. Okay. I'll give it a six. <laughs> I, I will. I will. I'll. Uh, I'll give it a. I'll give it a, six. a six for the action. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. It, because it, that that scene from the Jedi Temple with them getting Grogu out that was actually cool. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I gave it really a really high score. If if I would I would have really given it a much higher score if the entire season was amazing. Um. Uh, but as this episode, just judging this episode, it had the pacing I liked, uh, except for some of the moments where they did slow things down. I really liked the way it was shot. Um, mm-hmm. I thought that Carl Weathers really did a great job um, with what he had to work with. And, Agreed. Yeah, I, I Agreed. really liked it a lot. Um, and uh, there were so many pieces that I I liked, and I see the potential. So for me, this really gets a high score of a nine. For me, um, this episode, in relation to the other episodes we had in this entire season, oh gosh, it, it deserves a five. But I, I, I'm going to give it a nine because it, it, it like I said, the, this episode alone is is great uh, with the with the flaws that it had, uh, you know, minus a point. But right now, the season is looking bad. Mm-hmm. It's looking real, but it has no con- it has no flow uh, to to really um, make us feel like we're actually going on a, a journey that makes sense. Again, the conflict is there; uh, it, it is not there. Uh, we we don't know. Um, we should be excited that next week is going to happen. Uh, yeah, next week they're going to do X, Y, Z, or they're going to try to do this. Uh, mm-hmm. or, or even at the end of this episode, if they said, hey, we're planning on going back to Mandalore. And we're like, yes, there's, some, there's, there's something to look forward to with these guys. They're not floundering. Right. And that's what's happening with this, this, this season. They're, it's floundering. And, and like I said, it really starts with that first episode just giving us so much stuff Agreed. and not following through with a bit of it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I give it a five. I mean, I give it a, I give it a nine. <laughs> but I get you. They I better get, you. get it together next week or they'll get it. it 
I'm going solo. <laughs> I hear you. I hear yeah. you, my dear. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us. And I especially want to thank Retro Nerd Girl for uh, for being here, hanging out with me, doing this particular, uh, doing this deep dive. Uh, positive fandom. She is lucky enough to be flying her way over to London for Star yeah. Wars Celebration. So she should be back with us. I want to say probably by the time we're Hi, RM, if you're watching. Seven. <laughs> Hello, my dear. So, Retro Nerd Girl, please tell the folks where they can find you. Okay, you guys can find me on my channel on YouTube, Retro Nerd Girl. And you can also find me on Twitter, uh, posting something about The Mandalorian or some interesting retro uh, movie. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is Oh gosh, I feel so bad. I can't catch them live. And I think one time I caught one live, I felt like I hit the lottery. I'm like, yay, I got one of Retro Nerd Girls uh, streams, uh, streams live. So folks, if you love that retro flavor with your films and television, you need to subscribe to, uh, oh, to uh, thank Retro you. Nerd Girl. <laughs> it's an awesome channel. Details are in the description box, so you can please go ahead and subscribe to her. Of course, I'm Lorena, Lorena Creo. You can find me on Twitter. Posted about all kinds of stuff, especially when it comes to uh, comes to uh, pop culture and film and anime. You can also find me on Twitter. You can also find me on Instagram. I did say Twitter. God, it's been a long, it's been a long day, long day today. <laughs> so, folks, please do hit that like button, share this video, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Mwah.